Good afternoon. Welcome to my channel, Watercolor Painting in the Afternoon. My name is Beth. Today I'm going to try painting this brown pelican. This pelican, I got a picture of him from the um, book by Audubon Society, and I'll show you the cover of the book in just a moment. Right there it is. And this pelican is one that I see all the time when I go to the beach and they fly in formation over the ocean, and it's just gorgeous. Um, I'm using my number 10, I think, round brush, and I'm going to start on the ocean. And what I'll do is I'll paint negatively around the bird uh, to paint the water. I don't have masking fluid anymore, and to be honest, I don't think I don't think I want to use it. This is uh, cobalt blue and Prussian blue that I'm putting together to make that very deep ocean blue that you see in the picture. Um, the reason I don't use masking fluid, it tears my paper up. The only time that I can use masking fluid is if I use very expensive um, paper that is designed especially to take a beating, and this is not it. This paper is Fabriano 1264. It's a spiral bound uh, notebook type of, of deal. And I really like the paper. It's, it's a good paper. But, you know, it is a wood pulp paper, so it's not going to do all of the things that 100% cotton will do. Um, if this, if I happen to really like this painting, then I can go back and I can paint it on 100% cotton. And uh, it will do a lot of things that this paper won't do. So we'll see. Uh, if, I, if I like it enough, I may do that. So putting in the ocean and making sure that I don't go too far into the bird because I don't want the blue paint to mix in with the colors that are on the bird. Pelicans have these beautiful long beaks. They're kind of a duck-like bird. They're not really, um, they're not like seagulls. They're more like a duck. Their feet are webbed. They have these kind of ducky looking bills and um, big gullets where they store the fish that they catch from the ocean. So they're very interesting and they fly, they fly in these beautiful formations. Um, along the skimming along the water and every now and then they'll take a dive and come up with a fish. Here I'm painting the underbelly of my pelican using Payne's Gray and I'm trying to put in some little feather-like details along the belly. As I paint I want to keep in mind that I'm painting feathers that the feathers have, that they lie in a certain direction. And even if the shape that I'm painting is solid, I'm going to try to make my brush strokes uh, go in the direction that the feathers would go. So even though you see a solid mass here, um, you know, if you look at the picture up close, you can definitely see the brush strokes going down and I did that on purpose and I think it does make a difference. I know that, um, you know, I think a lot of times we look at a mass like that think, well, I can just paint a line and I've done that before and it doesn't work as well. So that's why I did that. Um, at least for me, it doesn't work as well. So now I'm working on the neck and there was a little highlight there. Um, on the feathers. So a lot of the back of the bird is going to be black and white or or this Payne's gray and white I guess you'd say. And you know like I said before there's very little about the bird that looks brown to me but I think that like any animal they are you know they differ a little bit in their in the color of their feathers and um, you know where the color shows up, you know, like it's like 
like having two cats and both of them are cats, but they don't have the same coloring. So I think it is with most animals. And if you look at a brown pelican, sometimes they don't have much brown on them. Here I am mixing a little bit of brown into the black uh, because I'm right up there on the crest of the head and it seemed that there was a little bit of brown shining through on just right on the top of his head and then coming on back down the neck and making sure I make those little feathery strokes. And here I'm taking a look at this reflected light. The light on this part of the bird is being reflected off the water and it has this almost purple glow. So I'm really going to go for the purple. Um, I'm going to embrace it a little bit. Here I'm trying to I'm trying to zoom in a little so that you can see that purple blue streak right there um, of, of light that's reflected off of the water and onto the bird's feathers. So let's mix up a little bit of a grayish blue um, purpley color, <laughs> if it can be called that. And we're just going to keep making those feathery strokes as they come down the body of the bird. It's okay to leave a few highlights in there where there's just paper showing through. The paper acts as the white, of course, in the, um, in the painting. And a lot, of, a lot of artists will tell you don't use white at all. And I find that to be a very difficult thing. I think it's okay to use white sometimes. Um, sometimes it's really hard to get your highlights in there. It's hard to paint the area and leave enough white area for the highlights. And I think it's okay to take a little bit of white paint or white gouache. Um, in all honesty, I wouldn't use white watercolor because it just fades. You know, there's it, it will become translucent. It is watercolor after all and it will fade away and your highlight will be gone. So I tend to use, instead of white watercolor, white gouache. And white gouache uh, makes a much better, it makes a much better highlighter. That, or you could use a white gel pen, perhaps. Um, some of those work fairly well, some do not. Now I'm coming up above the area that's purple and painting in the fine feathers of the wing. And, you know, of course you have to go back here to the Payne's Gray or whatever gray it is that you're using, and you use that to fill in these feathers. And you want to try to capture the shape of the bird in the feathers. So up close to its neck, the feathers look a little rounded. Down at the end, they look more straight. So that you can see that there's a... Uh, a shape, a form to the wing. And I struggled with that a little bit, but I think in the end, I remember to go back and really make sure that that, that shape was put in there.
now working on those larger feathers on his back. I found these were the hardest to do because they were mostly white and just had soft gray shadows. Um, and I think probably I made the shadows a little bit too dark, but you know, it's better to be able to see them than to not, you know, not to know they're there. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm not too upset about it. Uh, but there's a subtlety to those shadows that's hard to, to portray in a painting. I don't know if you can hear her, but my cat is meowing at me. I'm not sure what she wants other than food, which she's already had. Is it Callie? What you want, girl? Meow, meow. <laughs> and here I've taken some yellow ochre and I am painting the head of, of the pelican and down his beak a little bit. His head was a pretty bright yellow and then um, he had a little bit of red around the eyes and then he had this beautiful blue eye uh, right in the center. Well, some people like to put the eye in first and I've done that before and you know what it really does kind of help you sometimes it helps you to see the the bird that you're painting when it's just a, an empty little circle there um, it's hard to see the bird emerging and so, um, you know, if you want to, you can always try painting the eye first and not leaving it for last because it really does, I don't know, it just helps somehow. I'm not sure how. So even on the bird's head, you're going to paint these tiny little marks that indicate feathers. And I did keep coming back to the wings and putting some deeper shadows on the wings. His bill, his, uh, his beak or bill or whatever you want to call it, had several different colors on it. It was actually a, quite a colorful thing. So it had the burnt umber, it had a bit of, of a reddish orange color, and then it had the shadowy uh, Payne's gray color on it. I'm just taking away some of the sharpness of those shadows there and then painting very carefully around the eye. I had to let that eye dry just a little bit before I could finish it off. And I think that just about does it. I just a few more little touches here and there. 
I really enjoyed painting this pelican. Um, I might do it again on better paper, but there's the comparison, Mr. Pelican. <laughs> and I'm going to take the tape off and we'll see what he looks like uh, with a nice clean border. I sure do hope that you've enjoyed this. Um, I really think that birds are one of my better subjects. <laughs> I can paint birds um, fairly well. I'm still working on it, but uh, I really do enjoy it. And I hope that you have also enjoyed it. And we'll maybe have a go at painting some birds, maybe some seabirds that you enjoy or birds out in your own backyard. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, remember to like and subscribe.